Hi, this is Brian Lai from Malaysia. I'm a lecturer from The One Academy. In this video, I am going to make high resolution model from our previous blocking model, as well as putting texture on them. We will be covering modeling, UV in Maya, and texturing Substance Painter. Let's get into it. I have my block scene open and I'm going to export the book geometry only. Then import it to a whole new scene like we always do. Since this book was already a simple rectangle, we don't really need to create a new model to replace it. Simply start from this low resolution model. I'm separating the faces to two components, the paper in it and the cover itself. First thing to do here is to give thickness to the cover and extend the size just a little for the bottom, top and right side. Then I can delete the face inside since they are hidden under the cover and being covered by the paper mesh. What's different for this tutorial here is that we are going to UV this before making a high resolution model. Doing UV at this stage can be very comfortable and easy to control. And you will get a flat and nice result from here. We are not going to use UDOM workflow for this particular object since it is being covered by the cloth at the end. We don't really need high texture resolution for it. And now I'm adding more division for us to do some manual sculpting. As you can see here, I added some line but it doesn't affect my UV. It is important to keep monitoring your UV throughout the entire time. If you have accidentally made a modification to the UV, simply hit Ctrl Z to undo. Meantime, I'm exploring the need of the line. As well as creating bevels and dented edges, Now we may start sculpting by going to Sculpting tab in the menu and select the fourth brush from the list, which is similar to the ZBrush Move brush. Then we can make some imperfection to the edge, bend and squeeze it. Do try out other brushes. If you did a bad stroke, simply undo it. Hold Shift for Smooth brush, exactly the same with ZBrush. I can also use soft selection to bend the top surface book cover, making it look like a very old book and have been read by many time in the past. Once we are happy with the shape, we can export this to OBJ and proceed texturing in Substance. Here I am importing my model to Substance Painter. To speed things up, we are going to use some preset material. In my case here, I'm using Fabric Suit Vintage. The texture seems to be a best fit to our cover. I put it into a folder and name it Fabric, and create a mask and target it to the cover. Then create another folder, name it Book Paper. Create a black mask and target only to the paper area. Then create a base material and put under it. Now we are going to further enhance the cover by changing the color. Giving it a dark and dull brown color can make it look vintage. Also, we are going to strengthen the fabric lines. There's few parameters under the pattern tabs. Simply play with them and see how it turns out. Although all the parameters effects here can be created easily by adding more layers manually, but if there's any way we can keep our layer clean, it will be the go-to option. Next, we create directional lines for the paper part. Create a new layer and name it Line Bumps. Set its height to negative values. Create a black mask and add directional noise to under the fill tab. Play with the UV transformation to achieve a thin, subtle and clean straight line. And then we will be adding scratches. 
This time we won't really apply too much bump. Instead, this scratches here is mainly affecting the color and roughness channel. If we look into the reference, we can tell that the scratch area is always brighter and much more sensitive to light. So we are going to set roughness slightly lower than the base material and color to gray. Change the blending mode to overlay and then apply a relative grunge map into the layer mask. This quickly gives an impressive realistic look to the paper material. Now I decide to add another bigger scale line bumps so that the line looks more dynamic and won't look to contrast across the entire surface. Now here's the fun part. Even though this area wasn't really visible to the final render, I insist to paint it to the textures. First create a black material and set the height to negative value, and then we should paint a bold stroke at the corner where the paper was connected to the cover, then use a small rounded brush to create columns like I did in the video. It shouldn't take you too much time, as you don't really need to paint them precisely, we only need the patterns. Then we can erase some area to make random length for each line, then the same thing to be done to the other side. Now I'm adding water stain to the cover. Add a new material and set color to black. Set blending mode to overlay and assign a stain looking texture to the masking. I added roughness here to be slightly shinier than the base, so that the stain is a little sensitive compared to the base itself. I then go to Photoshop to create a tighter texture for the book cover. This is Life of Girls Who Became Famous written by Sarah back in 1886. One thing to bear in mind, if you want to input your own texture into Substance Painter, be sure that your canvas size is a perfect square, otherwise you will be experiencing image stretching. Set your words to white color and background to black color. We are going to use this image as an alpha instead of texture in Substance Painter. Drag your image to Painter and it will require you to identify the type. Simply select Alpha and Import to Project Untitled, then hit Import. Create a new material now and add a black mask to it. Under the mask, add paint and input your imported image to the Alpha slot in the paint properties. Now you should be able to stamp it anywhere you want. At some point, you may want to change your alignment type. I can't tell you which one to use because it's very situational dependence. Just try out different alignment types and you will know which one performs best for your case. Last, we are going to paint some darker color around the book corner and occlusion area. Other than black, I am also adding another brighter tone color to cover edge. I want to make this book look like it was placed in a standing way for many years, so we are going to paint the bottom area to be brighter because it was damaged by rubbing and friction. Last, we are adding some random bumps to the cover so it won't look too flat and clean. I will be continuing to further enhance everything, make sure all of them look good from different lighting, angles and distance. Don't worry, what I'm going to do after this video is exactly the same. It is a repeating process to enrich every channel. No big changes or magic tricks will be made. Last step in this tutorial is to save your file. We will be discussing how to export this to Maya in the ninth lesson. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the YouTube channel and stay tuned for new videos. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.